ladies and gentlemen, it is your host who's finally feeling better with the most, Avril R32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button, because I know I destroyed the boo-boo stain off my bathroom from that food poisoning as we climb even higher the 1500 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, feels good to be back. Uh, that food poisoning was really kicking my tail the past couple days, but we're feeling much better. Thank you all for the love and support as always. Wanted to do a bit of a different tier list today because I really don't have any sort of deck profiles to do or talk about because I don't have a regional until September 28th. So I at least wanted to talk about uh, a board breaker tier list because what's really interesting about this new format is that you can go in two different directions with your deck. You can either play like 15 hand traps, unless you're playing Tempai, you basically just play 20 to honestly like 25, especially once we get Mulcharmy, uh, Foie Ross, and Rage of the Abyss. Um, but if you don't want to play like say 12 to 15 hand traps in a normal Yu-Gi-Oh deck, uh, then you can go the board breaker route. And so I want to talk about that because I feel like whatever route you choose to do isn't necessarily bad. Um, although there are some hand traps that I've come to realize aren't as good as I thought when we started this new format. Like, for example, I don't think Droll and Lockbird is actually all that great because Ubel has lines to just play around it and just, well, uh, <laughs> actually just play through it. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and dive on into this. Uh, again, I don't know how to make tier lists. Don't worry, we're not going through all this. It's just duplicated, so I'm just using someone else's. We've got the most main decks, some main decks, most sides, some sides, uh, niche or rogue, and then, of course, we have our patented booty, 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 but she category that uh, a lot of people were getting salty in my last tier list that uh, I put some things in the booty booty butt cheek category. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, on a side note, I do think that the mole charmies are something that you should at least be side decking if you want to go that, down the hand trap route. But let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a hand trap tier list. So starting off, uh, we got to talk about the books. Uh, obviously not Book of Lunar Eclipse because that card is liquid ass with big old chunks inside. Um, but Book of Eclipse and Book of moon so you might be thinking avery why would someone want to play book cards when you think about it what deck right now can really deal with a book of moon-esque card like even when you look at snake eye boards that end on wave high king caesar they have like mascarena maybe like a flamberge and some other stuff if you book of eclipse them you turn off the wave high king you can book a moon wave hiking. You can book a moon Disarray. You can book of Eclipse Disarray. I feel that books are actually really being slept on. And I think that we could see like six books of three, you know, three of each come back into the format like we saw with Kashtira Arise Heart. Because Disarray is honestly a pretty good card. And I think it's only going to be better once we get the uh, Fiendsmith support. Um, the other Fiendsmith support in Rage of the Abyss to where it becomes much easier to make Disarray. I think that we're going to see books, um, maybe not now, but definitely post Rage of the Abyss. I think that six books is just going to be the norm going into uh, the new format. So I think it's going to be in some main decks unless people decide to go, you know, a hand trap heavy route so that they don't lose to like the one dude playing Gimmick Puppet FTK since that deck can still FTK if they open up access to the field spell. Uh, next up here... Um, I would say that Change of Heart would be in some side decks. Change of Heart is not terrible. I think that that's something that um, really only Tempai would play with. Maybe other decks will kind of mess around with it. Change of Heart's not terrible, um, but I just don't think it's impactful enough to where you'd want to main deck it. You know, it's still at one. We don't have it at two. Like, I think it's at two in both OCG and Master Shits. I could be wrong. It could just be Master Shits. Um, but yeah, it, it's just something to keep in mind. Cosmic Cyclone. I think that this is going to go in most side decks. Being able to Cosmic Cyclone a Sangin Summoning on activation is really good. Same thing with the Gimmick Puppet Field Spell. Being able to Cosmic Cyclone Runic Fountain is really good. I've seen a lot of players in my local community go to Runic Variants just because Runic really didn't get hit. Skildren's at one. Okay, cool. You play Power Sync Stone. You play Tyrant's Tirade. You max out on Synchro Zone. Uh, it, like you have plenty of choices available to you for whatever version of Runic you want to play. Maybe you want to play the White Forest Runic version. Cosmic Cyclone's still good. You turn off the Runic Fountain, they're going to be crapping all over the floor. Someone commented on one of my videos saying that you talk about poop a lot. Um, yeah, it's part of the jokes, pimp. Uh, people are going to be crapping all over the floor if you Cosmic Cyclone the Runic Fountain. Or would you prefer me to say that they're going to get salty? Because they're really going to do both. <laughs> uh, next up here, Dark Ruler No More. Uh, this is going to be a most side decks. Um, I've seen some White Forest lists um main decking evenly match and i've even seen some that are also main decking dark ruler with the evenly just because white forest uh decks specifically the runic variant <clears throat> has a very hard time 
going second. So being able to play things like Dark Ruler and Evenly as flex spots in your main deck um, or even in your side is very, very good. Dark Ruler literally shuts off an entire Snake Eye engine or a Snake Eye board because, you know, that again, they're going to end on like maybe Mask Arena, Disarray, Wave Hiking, Flamberge, maybe something else if they're if they open up good enough. But like, who's afraid of that board? Like pre-Rage of the Abyss, Dark Ruler just shuts off everything. Now, obviously, if they have the Disarray and they have another card to chain, then they can go Disarray to stop the Dark Ruler. That's where, you know, you could Cosmic Cycle in their Equip Spell. You could book the Disarray. Like, you have other options available to you, right? Like, it just depends on how you open. You know, if you open up Double Dark Ruler, well, then that kind of solves the issue right there. As Well, actually, no, because then they'll just negate the effect of the Dark Ruler and it's hard once per turn. But... If you're playing something else along with the Dark Ruler, it's not bad. Or even just being able to go Dark Ruler if they negate it and you have like an evenly match and they can't stop the evenly, which again, uh, I think that's going to be in some main decks, then you're off to the races, right? Like it, it's crazy how good board busters are against the uh, Snake Eye board. And even Dark Ruler into a Ubel board is really good. You know, being able to turn off the one Omni negate that we have in the game right now, pre Rage of the Abyss, in the form of Verudas like is crazy good and then evenly match being able to just completely wipe out a board ideally if they don't have like verudos up in the uvel matchup which if they pop off they pop off it is what it is you just try and bait it out being able to just evenly clean up a field is crazy good like uh, these these four cards here dark ruler evenly in the books i think we're definitely going to see you know either maybe a little bit in pre rage of the abyss and i would say definitely after rage of the abyss <clears throat> next up here is Pankratops. I'm going to put Pankratops in the some side deck uh, spot because Pankratops is not a bad card. I just feel like you have better options available to you this format. Um, you know, I don't really feel like Pankratops is a card that Tempai would play because I think that they would want more high impact ish cards that I think that Pankratops just really doesn't solve that for this format. And maybe post Rage of the Abyss a little change, but I want this tier list to be like primarily pre-Rage of the Abyss because we still have several weeks before Rage of the Abyss drops and, you know, everybody needs a clean pair of shorts because of how broken, you know, the Azamino cards are. But I, I just don't feel like that Pankratops is the best thing in the world. Next up here, Enemy Controller. Uh, this is this is booty booty butt cheeks. Like, why the fuck are you playing Econ? Forbidden Chalice is booty booty butt cheeks. Um, Droplets. Uh, Droplets definitely doesn't feel like it's a main deck card. It's going to be, or uh, excuse me, a side deck card. It's definitely going to be in some main decks. I mean, there are a lot of Tempai decks that are playing like 15, 18 hand traps, and then they're playing, you know, two to three Droplet. Droplet's a crazy good card. You know, you activate Lightning Storm, uh, which we'll put in the most side deck side. Um, you know, you can activate Lightning Storm and then chain Droplet, get rid of the Lightning Storm, and negate a body. Like, it's it's crazy good. I remember doing that when I played Tempai Cash Tira. Uh, that I got 10th place at. Like, I would activate Lightning Storm. My opponent would chain Masquerina. I'd chain the Droplet, send the Lightning Storm, negate the Masquerina, blow away the entire Snake Eye board, and they're sitting there really upsetting spaghetti. And meanwhile, we're just big chilling, just OTKing. Um, yeah, Lightning Storm is going to be crazy. I think it's going to be both sides. And Droplets, I think if you're playing a deck like Tempai, is going to be really good. I say some main decks because obviously not every deck is going to be playing uh, Droplets. And I think that there will be a decent amount of decks that are going to be possibly main decking it, if not side decking it. So Kaijus. I got to put Kaijus in the niche to row category. Kai, Kaijuing one monster doesn't really solve issues, right? Like if Ubel pops off and they've got an end board of Wave Hiking, Phantom Ubel, Verudas, maybe they've even got a Disarray, like just the whole kit and caboodle, right? What does a Kaiju solve? The Kaiju really doesn't provide anything other than a free body for the opponent. Sure, you can like eliminate a Verudos, but then you still got to play through the Wave High King. You got to play through the Disarray. You got to play through uh, the Phantom of Ubel. Like you have so many things to play through at that point that it's just really not that good. Like if most decks were ending on like one body, like what White Forest Runic typically does, they just end on Diabel. Maybe they have a little Knight up. Maybe they have a Chaos Angel up depending on the matchup. Then yeah, maybe a Kaiju's cute, but I mean, White Forest Runic is rogue to fucking tier two. And I would know because I'm main decking that. Like that's my main deck until we get Azamina. So like it really doesn't do anything right now. Um, Fenrir's niche to rogue. I wouldn't even really say this is a board breaker. I don't know whoever made this tier list. I don't think really knows what they're talking about, to be honest, because I don't think Fenrir is really a board breaker card, but sure, it's niche to rogue. It's a decent card. Uh, honestly, Kurokara is kind of liquid ass, and the reason for it, you would think that it's good, right? Because 
You look at you Bell's end board and you think, okay, they got Rudos, they got Wave High King. You look at the Snake Eye end board, they got Masquerina, they got this, they got that. But you have to play through all that. So, like, if you draw to, like, a five-card hand, assuming you don't get hit with, like, a Cypher and Lord Omega, you've got five cards, plus you've got the Kurokara. You've got those five cards to try and bait out the opponent's negates, and then you're going to follow up with a Kurokara to punch for game if that goes through. It, it, I just think the Kurokara is not the move. Same with um, Sphere Mode. Not enough decks put up three or more bodies. Now, you might be thinking, Labor, you just said Ubel puts up all these bodies. You just said Snake Eye puts up all these bodies. Yes, but... That's pretty much the only two decks that do. If there were, like, a couple more decks that could put up multiple bodies that were, like, tier 1 to, like, tier 2, I'd say absolutely play Sphere Mode. Um, but I, I think that you're playing too heavy into the multiple bodies on board scenario. Whereas, I think that Lava Golem is going to be in some sides. I think Lava Golem is really good this current format. Um, and I think that just current card and Sphere Mode, it's just not their time right now. You know, they're good for what they are, but... Just just not right now. So they they are the best in the booty booty butt cheek category, we'll say. Uh, Marionette is liquid ass. I don't even know why that's here. Uh, Twin Twisters, I feel like, has really just fallen off. Um, Santa Claus, same thing with the Kaijus. I mean, no. Uh, Mind Control. I'm going to put it in niche. I mean, we got three Mind Control. What, what are you Mind Controlling? The Disarray to bait out a Negate, I guess. I just feel like that you have better cards available to you than a one-for-one -one trade with, like, a mind control. Um, Raigeki. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, so I love the fact that all the Tempai decks have gone to playing three fucking Raigeki. And I it, keep in mind, no one was on Raigeki until I started that trend at YCS Indie. I just want to throw that out there. That was my own little spicy tech. And Raigeki was crazy at YCS Indie when I actually played against meta decks and not table 500 scrub rogue decks. Sorry, can you still tell I'm salty about that? <laughs> um... But yeah, Raigeki's absolutely nuts. Uh, I'm taking the, the W on this. I started this trend, and I'm not going to let anybody tell me different. Um, let's just put this Lunar Eclipse in here, because ain't nobody playing this. Um, Super Poly, I'll say it'll go in some sides, because obviously Brandy can play it, Chimera can play it. Um, I, I feel like that if you have the ability to play Super Poly and you got the space for it, you can maybe get away with it. I guess you could argue Tempai could get away with it, but like you've got better cards available to you, so like why? But it's something that I feel like will always be a good card, especially the more super poly targets we get. This card just gets better with age. Um, so I think we could see it in some side decks. Um, thrust and Talents, I, you're either main decking this or you're side decking it. So you can make the argument it would be in some main decks or most side decks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's they're not bad cards. Uh, there's not really much else to say about it. Uh, Xyz Encores, Booty Booty Butt Cheeks, Ultimate Slayer. It saw a little bit of play in the OCG with the Crossover Breakers uh, set that came out, but we don't get that until, like, December. So, like, why? Um, and then Alpha, the Master of Beasts. Uh, no, this doesn't even go in niche. So, that's my list. Uh... I'm actually kind of shocked, like, how much ended up here in some main decks. We have nothing in most main decks. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that Thrust and Talents could go up here, but yet some decks will side deck it, so I guess if you had to, like, put something in the most main decks category, I'd say it'd be a triple tack package, but everything else, I think, is only going to be in some main decks or just mostly be in the side, um, <clears throat> because... If you go a hand trap route, obviously you're not going to be playing any of these. Um, and if you're on Tempai, then yeah, maybe you're playing Drop It, Lightning Storm, and Raigeki in your main. Um, but then I think most decks are going to be either side decking uh, Raigeki or uh, Dark Ruler and Emily or main decking it. But if you're main decking it, you're probably on something Rogue or Tier 2 like White Force. Like, I don't think we're going to be seeing Snake Eyes or Yubel playing Dark Ruler and Emily in their main. Like, I just don't think it's going to happen. I think that. Decks are going to be on hand traps. Maybe once we get to Rage of the Abyss, we'll see, you know, more of the Mold Charmy stuff. <clears throat> and that's sort of like my bold predictions that I think hand traps going to be super heavy post Rage of the Abyss. Maybe with some board breakers, like maybe we see like 15 hand traps and like three to six board breakers with like Book of Moons, even these are Dark Rulers, just to be able to help crack those nasty boards. Because remember, Azamina does have an Omni Negate that Snake Eyes can make by summon number four or five. And then they can just pop off and make a great board again. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Never done a board breaker tier list before. So, I uh, want to see what y'all think. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.